Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug metoprolol, also known as Lopressor. Today we'll be covering all of the topics you see below. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Metoprolol belongs to the beta blocker drug classification and is used as an antihypertensive medication. This means that metoprolol will block or inhibit the beta adrenergic receptors in the sympathetic nervous system, also known as the fight or flight nervous system. For a quick review of the beta adrenergic receptors, beta 1 is responsible for increasing heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output, while beta 2 is mainly responsible for bronchodilation. At low doses, metoprolol is a selective beta 1 blocker, also known as a cardioselective blocker. This means that metoprolol inhibits the binding of adrenergic neurotransmitters at the beta 1 receptor sites, and if we block beta 1, this results in a decrease in heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output. This is why metoprolol is used as an antihypertensive medication. So, metoprolol is mainly used for the management of hypertension, high blood pressure, but it is also used for the management of chronic heart failure, angina, and myocardial infarction. Metoprolol can also be used in certain cardiac arrhythmias, including tachyarrhythmias. Tachyarrhythmias meaning abnormal heart rhythms with a heart rate of 100 or more beats per minute. Again, metoprolol works as a treatment in these problems mainly due to its effects of decreasing heart rate and blood pressure. Metoprolol and other beta blockers have been shown to prevent migraines, though the reason for this is not exactly understood. To remember the side effects of metoprolol, it's important to remember how the drug works. Remember, metoprolol inhibits the binding at beta-1 receptor sites, thereby decreasing heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output. Metoprolol can therefore cause bradycardia, or abnormally low heart rate, orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, and other problems like nausea, weight gain, and insomnia. It is important to note that in higher doses, metoprolol can actually block beta-2 receptors, causing bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction may present as wheezing and shortness of breath. This is why metoprolol should be used with caution in anyone who has asthma, COPD, or other respiratory dysfunctions due to that risk of bronchoconstriction in higher doses. Metoprolol is contraindicated with bradycardia, hypotension, cardiogenic shock, acute heart failure, acute pulmonary edema, and more. In the case of metoprolol overdose, where symptomatic bradycardia and hypotension are present, the most common antidote is glucagon. Glucagon may be administered alongside norepinephrine or epinephrine to help counteract the effects of the overdose. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of metoprolol. Watch for changes in blood pressure like orthostatic hypotension, and always ensure that the client's blood pressure and heart rate are within normal limits before administering the drug. It is very important to instruct clients not to abruptly stop taking metoprolol due to the risk of rebound hypertension. Like other antihypertensives, metoprolol must be tapered off, even if the client's blood pressure is improving. If you have any questions about metoprolol, you can let me know in the comments, or you can visit rpnt.ca for more information and practice quizzes.